we plop down in Tangerang, Indonesia, this industrial suburb outside of the capital of Jakarta, with the plans that for the next month, we were going to live as Nike's factory workers lived, which meant that we were going to go live in a worker's slum outside of the capital. And we were going to live on the workers' wages, $1.25 a day for the next month, to try and come maybe to a better understanding of what it's like for Nike factory workers. have taken their sport rather seriously. Once things got a little better organized, people started taking notes, analyzing how they ran and how they could run even faster. Today at Nike, we know even more. We developed one of the most sophisticated sport research labs in the world to let us see in detail the peculiarities of style, the dynamics of foot strike. And at Nike, we're putting that knowledge to work, making shoes that actually help athletes to run faster and safer. Why do we go to so much trouble? Well, it may be the 20th century and all that, but there are still people out there who run as if their life depended on it. Labor activists are accusing sportswear manufacturer Nike of encouraging low wages and inhumane conditions at its factories in Indonesia. Former American soccer pro Jim Keady has spent a month living in a Jakarta slum trying to survive on funds he says are equivalent to the average local Nike workers' wages. Jim Keady joins me in our Sydney studio. Jim, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. And how long were you doing that? For one month. And how did you go? I uh, lost about 25 pounds and was hungry, tired, to the point of exhaustion nearly every day. And whereabouts were you living, Jim? In Tangerang, which is an industrial suburb outside of Jakarta. I invite you to come to Tangerang, Indonesia with me. I would be more than willing to go back for another month and to live on the wages of the factory workers and have a Nike executive live with me on those wages. And then we'll see at the end of the month if their tune doesn't change about how Nike treats their workers in Indonesia. I got, I got a little gift for you because I always oh. come bearing gifts whenever I get to meet a CEO, which okay. I'll tell you isn't yeah, you, that you often. You don't have to take too many gifts. All right, all right. No, no, no. This is, this is a good one. You'll like this one. I've got here two tickets, one in my name and one in your name, for you and I to go to Indonesia together. All right, and you show me those factories. You explain this to me. Right? I'll show you what's going on friends. Sunday. Oh, no, not a chance. Huh? Not a chance. No? No. But they're, they're transferable. I can change it to another day. No, I'll tell you. Yeah, seriously, look at this. Michael Moore, I got it right here in your name here. And no, no, I, this one, look at this. You and me on Singapore Airlines. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It's going a good airline. Yeah, it's a great airline. Here, sit back down. We got to negotiate right. this deal. All right, all right, all right. No. Have you been there? I've never been to Indonesia. You've never? Oh, you've got to go. No, I can't go. Okay, now the, the, the rest of this year. Your wife. Remember the wife that gave you the book. My wife may make me go. Uh, so I won't tell her about it. <laughs> you tell her. And Michael Moore came in there with a free ticket. This is a free ticket. No. Another anniversary present. It's a free ticket to Indonesia. <laughs> you know, I mean, basically, you've got, uh, you know, an underdeveloped 
country with a, a repressive regime. I mean, how many people were killed in the Cultural Revolution?